The Coalition of Northern Groups on Wednesday unveiled the symbols of Operation Sheikh Kafasa, the security outfit that would tackle the kidnapping and banditry in the zone. The outfit, the group said, will be formally inaugurated in the coming weeks when all necessary legal processes might have been formally adopted and ratified by the Northern State governors. The symbol is embedded with the strength of a roaring lion like that of the leopard in Amotekun of the southwest. Sheikh Kafasa is designed to be the vanguard of the entire North, encompassing every ethnic group and religion, and to be deeply patriotic in its operation. On Wednesday, they announced the unveiling of the security outfit symbols, which it claimed, when inaugurated, will complement the efforts of the security agencies in the country. Spokesman for the group, Abdulaziz Suleiman, at the Iowa House in Kaduna, said the region for the past 12 years had struggled with a myriad of challenges of dwindling economy, rising poverty and a crippling security situation, which is part of what necessitated the decision. Jonas Nozva, phone tele by telephone this morning, is a security expert, Kabir Adamo. Good morning to you, Kabir. Good morning. And thank you for joining us on the news. The pleasure is mine. Now, the coalition of Northern Groups on Wednesday unveiled the symbols of Operation Shige Kafasa and the security outfit that will tackle the kidnapping and banditry in the zone. What's your reaction to this? Um, it is uh, an indication of the desire of Nigerians ac across all uh, divides to have improved security. It is also an indication of, that Nigerians are not comfortable with the current security arrangement in the country. Uh, it also appears to be a reaction to uh, the southern western states creation of Operation Amotiko and the concern that perhaps um, there is a, a movement to start with some form of regional governance or arrangement. So it seems to me that this group is also taking that bold step, even though it is clear that the northern governors have not yet embraced the uh, initiative by, by the, this northern coalition. Yes. On the one hand, it is also clear that it's not the entire northern you know, states or even people that, that are behind this particular coalition, because as you're probably aware, southern Kaduna has have already indicated their desire to launch their own initiative. So it appears that we are at the beginning of uh, this type of initiative would be more of such regional arrangements coming on board. Oh, the, the emergence of these um, regional security outfits, do, doesn't they in any way, don't they in any way um, seem to be replacing the, the clamor and call for, for community and state policing? Yes. Um, you know, the interesting thing is that the Buhari administration, when it launched the revised national security strategy in December, indicated that community policing would be the focus of its policing arrangement. So it appears the government itself is geared towards community policing. And if you recall, just two days ago, the Inspector General of Police was at the Senate, uh, where he you know, had a closed session with the Senate and tried to explain the modalities of community policing. And then before then, he had a meeting with the Nastrawa State Governor and at that meeting, he also indicated that community policing is the way to go. So my worry is that we know the wheels of governance, government are slow, unfortunately. But in Nigeria, it appears they are slower, even though government has indicated that this is the focus of its policy direction, that, that is community policing. But it appears that that message has remained at the federal level. Uh, it has not gone down to these regional bodies. Uh, the development agenda for Western Nigeria started the move. Before then, if you recall, a couple of months ago, about more than a year ago, in Taraba, uh, former uh, Chief of Defense Staff, General um, you know, Chiwa actually made that, that, that call, that clarion call. So the, that, that desire is there in Nigeria, but unfortunately, it appears there is a deep link between what the government policy direction is and the desire of Nigerians. Uh, let's take a look at this um, security outfits, the regionalism of this security outfits. What would you say are the pros and cons to the regionalism of this security outfits? So the greatest concern I had when Operation Amotiku was launched was that it didn't have the legal backing of um, the states. Uh, the good thing is that it, that, that is being corrected. The second concern I have 
I had was the absence of the operational guidelines. We were told it was going to be an intelligence collection uh, body to support the, the police, but the operational guidelines were, were not clearly spelled out by, by the governor. The third concern I had for Operation Amotiko was the fact that, um, well, a, a clear uh, ethnic-based uh, group, that is um, Odua People's Congress, was a key component of Operation Amotiko. And in the past, we have seen how uh, OPC has attempted to enforce law um, based on certain criteria that was clearly not, um, you know, transparent. And, of course, it was not extrajudicial. So that, that was a major concern. Of course, um, there is also the fear that has been muttered by others that the pol politicians may hijack this type of arrangement to meet their own uh, in in interests, as it were. And our history has shown clearly that those type of arrangements exist. If you recall, the reason why the military in the late 1960s collapsed the local and regional arrangements that we had into the federal arrangement was be exactly because of this political um, hijacking of um, local and regional groups by, by politicians. So it appears we've not learned much. Um, if we want to have this type of regional arrangement, I hope and I pray that the police will be an integral part of their uh, operations so that the police firstly understand their operational guidelines and also take measures to, to prevent them from being hijacked by either sectional, regional, or state-level level politicians. All right. Interesting you did make mention of the fact of them not getting hijacked. Now, there are concerns that the CNG actually comprises of over 36 groups in the region. Now, this is the same group that gave the Igbo in the north three months ultimatum to quit in October 2017. Is this a valid concern? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Now, the, the CNGs, as we all know, is made up of about 36 groups in the region. And this same group in 2017 gave the Igbos in the north a three-month ultimatum to quit in October. Many people have expressed concern about the emergence of this group and knowing that in 2017 they were also a part that gave a section of the country an ultimatum to leave, to leave their zone. So this was the point I was making earlier on, yes. that there are, there are clear sectional and ethnic, and to an extent, um, even religious, uh, you know, projection within this regional arrangement. Yes. Um, and that is the greatest concern when, when this type of arrangement started coming up. Uh, they were, yes, a response to security, but because of the profiling that has existed in our country, and to an extent even the segregation, because, I mean, let, let's, let's call it what it is. Yeah. When Operation Amotikun started, the general belief is that it was Fulanese that were behind the banditry and kidnapping in the Southwest. So, um, Yeti Allah uh, contested because they felt their members would be targeted. So clearly, even the coalition group in the North that has come up uh, would definitely be oriented towards this type of profiling that exists in, in, in the North. So, and this is, I think, the greatest worry when you have such groups that are not um, state, that are not um, based on any uh, clear direction. Uh, they have their sectional and sometimes even ethnic agendas that may be projected when it comes to their op operations. Okay. Uh, clearly, we are at a dangerous time in, in our his history as, as a country. Okay. Now, a cross section of social and public commentators have also suggested that the emergence of these regional security outfits spells anarchy to the security architecture of Nigeria as a federal republic. Do you agree with this? No, I, I, I don't. Okay. You know, the, the reality is that we, you cannot suppress the desires of people. One of the primary reasons why, as, as, as humans, we come together as communities is actually to protect ourselves. So if um, the current federal arrangement is failing to protect us and we're seeing this type of emergence, I don't see it as a threat. I see it as an opportunity. And that is why I said earlier on, the police in particular and the agencies such as the Office of the National Security Advisor need to be realistic, engage with this um, arrangement, understand the reasons for their agitation, and then direct them properly. But you cannot suppress 
uh, they desire. The reality is that they want better protection, and if you don't give them better protection, they will continue to see this type of agitation. So instead of an attempt attempting to suppress them or deny their existence, we need to take control and then give them the direction that will be beneficial to the country. Kabir Ademu, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution this morning. Thank you very much for having me.